to another JVS movie review. Today, I am bringing you a review of a film that I saw back in February. And for some odd reason, I did not drop a review of this film, even when it played in very limited theaters afterwards and then disappeared from theaters. I still didn't do a review of this film. And then today, I found a film dropped on Netflix. And I think this is a film that's going to take off on Netflix. So I said, eh. Why not drop a review of a film that I saw months ago that's now about to drop on the biggest streaming service in the world that I think a lot, a huge audience is going to attach themselves to. And this film here is Land of Bad. And here's a quick synopsis. When a Delta Force team is ambushed in enemy territory, a rookie officer refuses to abandon them. Their only hope lies with an Air Force drone pilot as the eyes in the sky doing a brutal 48 hour battle and this is directed by William Eubank and it stars Liam Hemsworth and Russell Crowe. First I'll start off by saying this. This film got released in February, March area into theaters, very limited theaters. So it's a good chance you never knew it was even in theaters, how few theaters it played in. Because of small promotion, because this is a smaller film, and because of the release, which I think it got released two or three months way too early, everyone missed it. This film is one of the most entertaining movies to come out this year. As we're introduced to Liam Hemsworth Kurt at the beginning of the film, which everything happens at a, at a breakneck pace here. As, as William Eubank does an amazing job of setting up the characters and getting you exactly to what you came here to see. But... As we introduce the Liam Hemsworth character, we just see that he's a, a new officer in the Delta Squad. <laughs> and he's fighting for respect in this squad. Not necessarily literally, but just the respect of the guys as they're flying off of this mission to rescue an asset. That's as much as the plot as they give us. They give us absolutely nothing else. And at the exact same time, we have Russell Crowe's character, who is a drone pilot with a pregnant wife. And he's just working as a chef. Waiting to get on to his wife. Nothing big happens here. He understands the mission that's about to take place and who they're trying to rescue, but it doesn't seem like a pressing matter at that time. Once they get on enemy ground, the Special Forces Unit, and all heck breaks loose, that's when this film takes off. And amazingly, all heck breaks loose within the first 10 to 15 minutes. Like, it's when I say it's no wasted time in this film, which, again, I got to thank the director here of understanding that dragging out the beginning of this film before you get to the actual element would have been the worst thing in the world for this film. But instead, you get just enough background plot to support the action. And when the action kicks in, it kicks in super duper. Now, the only unfortunate element of this film is that you can predict Everything that happens from the act, the, the moment the action starts to the end of the film, you know everything that's going to happen here. They did not try to invent the wheel with this film. And for some people, I think that can turn you off because you can say, I've seen this film before. It feels like uh, behind enemy lines at times. It feels like a Tears of the Sun at times, which both of those films felt like other films in this uh, action war genre like both of those felt like other films and this one feels like a mixture of both of those films and other films in this genre so that can be a turn off to a lot of people because you're, you're expecting to see something original what this film does and what this film does an amazing job at is saying we're going to give you a simple plot a simple story we're going to give you something you've seen before but we're going to execute it at such a high level that you'll forget all of that when this action starts, it is so realistic. It is so engrossing. It is going to completely make you forget that you've seen this before. The cinematography in this movie, especially in the night scenes in this film, is fantastic. For the size of the budget of this film, I am surprised they were able to get some of these shots they were able to pull off in this movie. Like It feels big. It feels grand as you're watching this movie. And 
the director does an amazing job of immersing the audience into Liam Hemsworth's character struggle. Like you feel like you have switched places with that character and you're in the middle of this jungle and you're fighting for survival the way the character is. Like I think that is a a key element of a director who is in full control over what he needs his audience to see and experience in the film. And William Eubank does an amazing job at that at this film. At the same time, we get Russell Crowe's character, who is a drone pilot, and all he is doing for the majority of the film is sitting behind the screen. As he is dropping bombs, as he's talking to Liam Hemsworth character to get him to safety, those scenes are just as thrilling as the action scenes in the film. Because Russell Crowe gives a great performance. And in a supporting role, Russell Crowe gives one of his best performances in recent years. And it's just that his intensity as everything is going on is great. And then the heartfelt moments between him and Liam's character overcomes as he's just trying to calm him down and get him to safety. Also, amazing work here. It's it's a it's amazing how an actor, the caliber of Russell Crowe, can pull off a character like this and never stand up. Never stand up. Voice inflections is what works wonders in this film because all his intensity and as everything is going on, all his concern or his worry, all his feel like love for this character is all prevalent in this film as you're just watching him sitting in this chair trying to get this kid to safety. Now, the again, the film moves very briskly. Like it's it's no wasted motion in this scene. By the time you get to the third act of this film which is the act that you would expect something like this to let you down. This film actually amps it to another level at that point, And it amps it up in intensity, where it helps focus the story even more. Down to the villains that you get in this film. It's amazing for this film, for the villains that we get, that you can still feel some justification in the villain and the villain's motives on why they think the way that they do. Again, another mark to the director. They say, this is how you do a film like this. Like, it, it's not overly preaching to you at all, but you do understand the motives of both sides here. And even though you understand the motives of both sides, that don't mean you will ever side with the villain, but you understand why they're doing what they're doing. And then the third act is it's on steroids, it's everything goes boom, everything blows up. But as all that's happening, all of it still feels realistic. None of it feels like the superhero war film where no matter what, you know, the guy's not going to die. A Rambo film. Like, none of it feels like a Rambo film where you feel there's no consequences and this guy's never going to die no matter what. Here, you, and you're you in constant fear that everything's going to fall apart and Liam Hemsworth character is going to pass away in this film. And that dread that you feel watching it is in credit to a director who understood that that was the key element of this film. That's the way this film is going to work the best, is if you, as an audience member, constantly feel like something bad is going to happen. And it's enough bad stuff that happens in this film to keep you intrigued in it. But Land of Bad, currently on Netflix, so please check it out. I think you're going to absolutely love it. As I said before, I think this film was released during the wrong time of the year. This is not a winter film. This is a spring summer film. This is a film you would go out to and go see in the movies. And I wish more people would have had the, would have had the opportunity to see it in theaters. But I am grateful that people will now get to see it on streaming and understand just how entertaining this film is. Again, I've compared it to uh, Behind Enemy Lines and Tears of the Sun. Both of those two in this war action genre are considered cult classics. Like, those are the films that you would go to if you wanted to see a war film that's not overly preachy, but has a lot of action in it and just enough of a story to keep you intrigued in it. Uh, Land of Bad fits into that area, and this is feels like old-school filmmaking for a new generation, which is also amazing. But <laughs> Land of Bad, out of a possible 10, I'm going to give this film an 8.5 out of 10. This is a really good action movie. I don't I don't think it's possible not to like this movie. I don't think anyone can not like this movie. It's, it's, the story's gonna be simple. If any gripe you can have, it's, the story's too simple. But I don't think you're gonna have a gripe with any of the performances. 
The direction in this film is top notch. And it truly makes up for the point that everything else is so simple around it. And then you get Russell Crowe putting on one of his best performances in recent memory. So forget all the exorcism movies that he's done that none of them are good performances. <laughs> but here he gives a really great performance that I think audiences will definitely enjoy. But check it out. Let us know what you think. This has been another JBS Movie Review. Peace, people.